Well, I mean, a lot of people have made comments on his underwater kicking just recently, obviously watching that world record go down. He's got some freaky underwaters, but it's obviously something that has, you know, progressed throughout the program. So Brian Barnes did tell me that you have um, a kick progression that is that is pretty awesome. So what's your philosophy on building underwater kick and developing it and, and um and getting it to the point where you've got a Coleman Stewart now? Yeah, I, I think the first thing that we look at is seeing, are they a full body kicker or are they a core kicker? You know, I, if you look Coleman, if you look at his underwaters from his streamline all the way down, he moves a lot. I mean, his whole body moves a lot. And then if you look at someone like Michael Phelps, he's able to keep his upper body pretty, pretty flat. Mm -hmm. And, start basically okay belly button rib cage that's the generation that's my my source of everything that's where it starts so i think trying to to distinguish between where you're going to create the most power and when i tell coleman a lot sustainable power like can you make your underwaters and those kicks intentional attentional and purposeful for eight laps mm. right and you know because you always have kids that are like oh i went i go 15 off every wall we're like well yeah but after six kicks you're slow yeah you should just come up um so i think the first thing is 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 identifying that and with coleman it was he's a full body kicker because we toyed around with the other way and he 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 just didn't generate enough force production per kick mm. um i think the big thing too is is understanding the range of a kick you know we always if i I was talking with Catherine Burkoff this morning and I drew her a picture, although you can't really see it, but I was like, I was like, Catherine, if you're going to kick a soccer ball really far and you're going to load your back foot to go kick it. So you're going to bring your back foot back and then you're going to go kick it. You're not just going to stop at the ball. You're going to kick through. So like, you know, we kind of, we took, we focus a lot on the same distance from your body line up and mm. back. And so sometimes it requires, more movement with your upper body. Um, but this kick progression, I started when I was at Swanee, University of the South, Swanee, Tennessee. There's nothing there but like three restaurants. <laughs> um, Division three school, and uh, there was a kid named Matt Martelli. Um, we hit it off. We, I grew up hunting in Louisiana, and he was a big hunter. And we would go hunting before practice and then go to practice. <laughs> um, <laughs> us, Division three, it was awesome. <laughs> and um, it started with him because you couldn't swim freestyle. Like the guy's hunter fly was faster than his hunter free. And I was like, okay, well then we'll just kick it. Like we, we can, we'll just minimize your freestyle because we need to score and more than just the hundred and two hundred fly. We need we need to get that fifty free down. But why don't we just kick the you know just kick it right and you just minimize your strokes. And so um, it started with him on basically it goes through a season um, and it's a resisted kick. Um, but there's always testing marks after that. Um, and so in that, I, I change the testing all the time. But it's really, right, we, we put them on a resistance and it's either towers or buckets or a stretch cord or whatever. And the, you, you're, you establish your appropriate kick rate. And that's, we do that through vertical kick. So if you have like a tempo trainer and, mm -hmm. you know, because taller kids, that kick rate's going to be slower. You know, if you have your five foot three, Swimmers, maybe that kick tempo is a lot, you know, a, a lot quicker. And that's to find the full amplitude, the, the correct range of amplitude on your kick. Mm. And not just, you know, the little short choppy ones, you know, because sometimes people just want to kick really fast. And I'm like, man, you're just wasting so much energy. Like slow it down and 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 move some water, right? And and so we find it through some vertical kicking, find the right the amplitude. And I'll even check it during, you know, the the resistance. But Basically, we go through a pattern. It's not a whole lot of rest to start the season because I kind of tell the team all this is to start is to be able to handle being underwater. For, you know, if you're only going to breathe so much at 100 back, if you're underwater 60 yards of the race, Coleman's only going to breathe so much. So it's right. a, lot, a lot of repeats come in. You know, we're going to hit 12 kicks, come back, rest 10 seconds. 12 kicks, come back. And you know, let's just say it's on a power tower, very minimal weight. And just being able to handle that. And then we up the kicks. We up the kicks. And we end up getting up to like 20 kicks, mm -hmm. which is pretty intense. Not everybody does. But for him, we'd get up to 20 kicks on 10 seconds rest. And let's just say it's 20 pounds of weight, 15 pounds of weight. 
and we're just and we're just testing can he hold the same frequency and can he hold the same rate over and over and over again and then uh, as the season goes we'll increase the weight we'll we'll start bringing the kicks down and uh we'll increase the rest so now we're going from like okay now we're it's not so much of a focus of being able to have intense you know purposeful kicks for for a 200 back it's it's more to okay well now how long does it take me to get there right mm. and, and at the end of the day that's the main thing right is okay coleman if you're gonna if your kick count's gonna be eight 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 ten you know short course meters is 10 the right for him you know obviously he doesn't really lose speed a whole lot but it took us a while to find out where he lost his velocity and, and mm. okay and i kind of tell the team you know like you got to come up before that because if you wait it's too late um so it's a kicking progression that goes through the whole season and, and when we test a lot, lot of it is just you know we'll go a broken 100 as fast as you can but you can't breathe you can only breathe at the walls so it's a hundred all out kick underwater and how quickly can you do it right you're managing your breathing on the wall obviously the speed underwater Later in the season, we'll go, you know, maybe we'll just get to 225s on 30, 225s on 25. Um, what's your time on both? You know, and then at that point, we're clocking them to a certain point as well. Like, how long right. does it take you to get to 15? So it's just data and giving them that data so they know, okay, yeah, I am quicker if I only take these many kicks. Or I'm quicker if I slow my kick rate down. Or I'm quicker if I if I, if I, I need to speed up my kick rate. Um you know, so I think it's something that I've done and I've just seen a lot of benefit with it. And we used to just, you know, that year I did it with that young man in division three and he went, he went a lot faster in his 50 because he just was so much quick. And then when I went to Virginia tech, that's when we started, we, I mean, we started using dog collars because I, I wanted to keep the hips open and I went through that phase. And then I what do you mean by dog collar? What's that? So, you know, the, um, those big Doberman pinchers or, or, you know, German shepherds, when you walk your dog, instead of just the collar that goes to the leash, you can put the full body thing on it to where they don't choke themselves. Mm. And so we had a guy named, uh, the first person I did this with was Charlie Higgins at Virginia Tech. His whole family ended up going there. And, and I brought it in and, and you, you put the dog collar sideways and you, you put it on and then you clip it right here. And then the leash thing is on the back. And we, that's where we would plug in the resistance mm. because everything below his rib cage was free and open and he was able to really whip it. And so it, it just kept their, their hips free. Um, mm, that's interesting. Yeah. And it worked really, really well. But then I went through a phase of like, well, maybe I want their hips to be restricted and I'd rather it be, I don't know. I kind of, I go back and forth. Right. <laughs> what about, what about fin kick? Is that something that is incorporated into this whole program? Yeah, eventually we'll get down to, you know, fast kicking with fins, you know. So the program has two parts, the, the resistance resistance part, and then the other part goes from, you know, the Aquavolo socks, which I can't remember who invented those, but I'm so glad they didn't exist when I swam because <laughs> those things are miserable. <laughs> but we'll go underwater and we'll have them be completely still, dead start, pop eight kicks, um and we'll then we'll move the socks up to their knees and then we'll take the socks away and then we'll add fins and we'll go add our kicks okay we'll go eight four with socks with eight kicks four with the socks at your knees at 10 kicks four with nothing at 12 and then we'll four 25s with fins mm. um and we just kind of build up basically that is kind of a, a mechanism to make sure they're starting the kick from the right spot and they're not just starting from their kit you know their knees or whatever um and you know the 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 thing with the socks, you know, in the water is they just min minimize your, your movement. And so just making sure that we're holding the same amplitude. And I always tell them, if you can kick a 0.45 per kick rate with socks on, you're going to hold some serious water on the top of your foot and the bottom of your foot without socks at a 0.45 kick rate. Right. So, yeah. It sounds like this is some testing and also maybe maybe some power progression. So how many times a week would you be incorporating that into the program? at least twice okay yeah we um and then obviously end of the year go it goes down um you know as the rest goes up the reps go down we take socks out we take the resistance out um 
you know, ends up becoming more so much of a speed component of, okay, last time it, after eight kicks, you were at this mark in 5.4 seconds. Can we get to the same mark with one less kick at 5.3 seconds? You know, and so it is a lot of testing. It is a lot of power-based um, resistance movement, but eventually it gets to just finding the exact range and amplitude mixed with your speed, you know, per person, right? I mean, for yeah. Coleman, his kicks are a little bit bigger and, you know, compared to, you know, Justin, for example, who's also there, his, we're trying to get his kicks bigger and, mm. and, and his are a little bit smaller and shorter. And so it's really just trying to find the right recipe for each person. So then do you translate that now into a, um, a kick count into their workouts? Let's mm -hmm. say they're doing a set of, you know, 2050s. Now they've come from this power session in the morning. Now they're doing a set of 2050s, you know, are, are they holding a kick count now? Yep. Every, I would say everything we do, even freestyle butterfly and backstroke, every single, even kick sets. I mean, we did a kick set this morning with the women and, and it was with a board, but I had them, you push off on the water and you go four kicks. You mm. know, the goal is to be, we have lines that are, they're going past, you know, lines going each way and bottom pull. The goal is to get past line three on the fourth kick before you come up. And obviously with a board, it's pulling you up. So you, they have to be pretty quick and forceful. So that's kind of the minimum is like anytime you're doing anything, it's a minimum four kicks. Yeah. Yeah. And Coleman, you know, if we go through race pace and, you know, and he's, he's cranking out 2050s on 130 backstroke. Um, usually what I'll do is for him, he's, he's probably going to get to at least 12 at holding his kick count. Um, you know, and then usually what I'll do is end up bumping him up, you know, okay, now we're going to add one on the first lap, three on the second lap, um, just to kind of force a little bit more of the attention to his concept of, okay, I want to be as fast on my last lap to 15 as I am the second lap. Mm. And I think that's where he's so good is if you watch even the ISL, if you watch his, his first lap, he's gets to the wall with everyone else. And then the second lap is where he takes off. And right. it's not so much that he's going faster. It's just that he can sustain it for four laps really, really well. Yeah. And, he, and he's, he's trying to, he's trying to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Although long course, I take away his kicks. <laughs> so we go 20 fifties. I don't let him kick for the first 12. Really? Yeah. It was just, dead start no push off just start go right to the swim flip push off two kicks up swim and then the last eight okay here's your kick count wow. but he hates that <laughs> what about those ones uh there's not many people that are comfortable underwater from the get-go from the jump you know so how do you build in comfort underwater just that peace of mind but also you know not pushing it to a point where you know you're holding someone's head underwater it's, it's a fine <laughs> balance too right Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we, you know, a lot of the early season we're doing underwater kick. The intervals aren't very tight. You know, it's really just form. You know, I'll do a lot of, um, we did this the other day, uh, where we, I think it was just 825s. And the first two, it was like, can you get to the other side in six kicks? That's all you get. Nice and easy, six kicks. Think about form. And then the next two, it would be like, just send your six kicks. And then hold that descend, but not to like something crazy. And we'll eventually get to like, okay, I want you to blast six kicks and then glide. Right. How far can you glide in your line before you come up? Um, you know, so it's kind of like developing that. And then, you know, we'll have challenging things that, uh, you know, two ways. One, you just drop the interval down and that just gets challenging. And you're having to control your, your breathing on the wall a pretty good bit. You know, breathe with your diaphragm. You know, we kind of say don't breathe with your shoulders. Um, but the one thing that I like doing that's, that's different. I did this a lot with Coleman when he was early on in his career, more for the 200 back, even though he hates the 200 back. Um, and it ended up helping his 100 is we would just do swim sets backstroke where he could only go fast when he's above the water. So we would just put the cord at 15 meters off both ways. You know, okay, go 15 off each wall, but just cruise it. But then when you get up, you crank to the wall, you flip, and then you cruise. Mm. And so we would do a bunch of stuff where he's having to. You know, because I think a lot of people can give repeat 25s on the water and it can help. But if you're not swimming with it, it's only going to go so far, right? It's, okay, now I got to get up and swim all out after I just mm. kicked all out. So it's just kind of a way of incorporating both that I think really helped him and others. But it just, I, you know, I think they just get more comfortable when they're focusing more on the flow and the